Welcome to episode four of my Halloween in uh the bu- 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 bonus episode because you guys asked for it. So here we are. Um you may have noticed uh there's been an addition to my Minecraft world, and that's because uh this episode is primarily about pixel art, because I enjoy doing pixel art. It gives me a chance to more or less draw in Minecraft, and I'm, I've been an artist forever, so drawing is a lot of fun, and getting to incorporate that into my favorite game ever, I mean, you know, come on. Um, but before we get into the pixel art and how I create pixel art, we're going to hop on over to my color palettes. Um, I promised you guys last episode that we would have them in this episode, so we're going to. Um, and these are just um, some build palettes I whipped together um, that I think you can use um, not only for like Halloween builds, but also uh, anything spooky or um, kind of autumnal. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first up, we have uh, autumnal harvest season. A uh, lot of oranges and browns, uh, some yellows and greens. Um, very kind of Thanksgiving ish, I guess. I don't know. Um, and then uh, for the ground cover, I have uh, path blocks and hot soul, um, horse dirt, some other browns. Um, and I think you could use this for a lot of different reasons. Or if you just want to kind of um, spice up the color palette of a farm, you could use well. Next up, we have Generic Spookumsville. This is just um, kind of, if, you, if you're not going for a thematic Halloween uh, experience, but you kind of want to have it be a little spooky, um, here you go. Got some grays and browns, a little bit of purple, a little bit of green, um, and darker tones as well. And then for the ground cover, uh, again, browns and grays and purples, um, and then a little bit of uh, a darker, darker color as well. Next, we have Frankenstein's Lab. Um, so this is kind of, um, you got your, your grays for your sterile scientific environment, and then um, some unnatural green kind of seep in and around and don't don't really like those those don't seem like they should be there but here we are um and then for the ground cover um more greens this might not be in the lab but maybe outside the lab um greens and browns and grays are kind of your best bet for any sort of evil scientist layer next we have abandoned urban landscape so my thought process for this was um, along the lines of Resident Evil or Seven Days of the Sky or um, The Walking Dead sort of thing. Anywhere where um, would have what were formerly big giant cities that are now very, very dead and potentially dangerous. Um, so a lot of grays and a lot of... Um, a lot of darker tones, um, a little bit of green because uh, it would get overgrown potentially, um, but mostly gray is kind of a dead color palette for the most part. For the ground cover, again, a lot of grays, um, gray with texture, um, a, a good safe bet, and then touches of black and touches of purple. Yeah. Next, a dark place, as opposed to, you know, a quiet place. Um, so if uh, your biggest fear is the dark, or if you want to create an experience where it's hard to see and that's a little nerve-wracking, um, blacks are a good way to go. So you have uh, coal, concrete, concrete powder, obsidian, uh, dark grays are very good for this. And then I threw in just a touch of purple. Just a touch, just a little something to break it up. 
Um, and then for the for the ground cover, again, dark grays and blacks. And then you can add in a little bit of a warmer, but still dark tone. Obsidian. It's got the purple in it. It's nice. Um, so yeah, if you want to go very dark, you can't see, you don't know what's lurking around the corner, because you can barely even see the corner. Uh, there you go. Uh, then I made some miniature palettes. So these are very small, very simple, just three block palettes. Um, but I like the idea of having a very simple concept and then expanding off of it. So uh, if you want some very simple ideas and then you want to just play with it and go up from there, uh, here you go. We have um, kind of blood and guts and bone. So quartz ore, uh, bone, and then a nether wart block. Uh, and then take that, darken it up. Um, brown stained clay red nether brick, and acacia. And I really like this combo. Um, the gray of this breaks up that red a little bit, and I like it a lot. Um, then I have some browns. We have uh, soul sand, which is one of the creepiest blocks. I mean, look! Look at their screaming faces! Doesn't get much creepier than that. Um, and then I did a smaller version of our uh, Frankenstein's lab down there um just you know you can play off of this in any way you want to really and then i did kind of a, a brown ish um almost like a leathery toned sort of palette and you could use this in a number of ways that i think could be really creepy and spooky and in a number of ways that aren't creepy and spooky um but this is stripped jungle log mushroom block and uh, iron ore and then we have a uh, kind of, I guess this would be kind of like a um, a brightly colored but not too vibrant sort of Halloween palette. Um, orange, green, and gray. Uh, and I've always enjoyed those colors together. They're a little oddball, but they, they're kind of nice. Um, a simpler version of the dark place. Um, black dark maroon and purple. Uh, this one is when Party City comes running at you and hits you in the face with their brightly colored Halloween decorations. Um, green and murky and thick. There you go. Um, and then uh, Dead Earth, I guess, would be the best one for this. Um, I really enjoy the combination of mycelium and dead coral blocks. Um, cause dead coral is kind of a purplish gray, and mycelium is kind of a grayish purple. And all of them look really diseased and textured and gross, so I love that combo. But yeah, if you, uh, if you take some of these simple, simple palettes and build off of them, I think the possibilities could be endless, really, so. Um, and then I decided to just, just throw one out there. Uh, Halloween party extravaganza, bright colors. You're gonna need some some eye drops for your eyes because they've been blown out. Um, <laughs> uh, which I mean, in small doses, these bright colors are a lot of fun. You put them all together, and it's kind of a mess. But uh, if you want to go for that like crazy Halloween party uh, aesthetic. There you go. Purples, oranges, blacks, greens. It's all there. And then, um, I just kind of threw some stuff together that I thought could potentially look good for a floor. If you're doing this sort of thing where it's just Halloween everywhere. Um, I like the idea of having brightly colored ore blocks. Um, so it looks like maybe if you put slime above this, slime was dripping on the floor. Um, redstone for blood, all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, these are the, the palettes I came up with. If you use any of them in your builds, um, please take screenshots and send them to me on Twitter or Instagram. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. I think uh, these could really turn into something. Um, if you're curious about the about what I used in my town over there. I also have those laid out. Um, this is 
uh, I called it Vlad's Kingdom. This is um, that area tucked behind our vampire cathedral um, where all the heads are on spikes. Um, so very, very simple. You have bright reds and path blocks and a little bit of brown primarily, but you have uh, nether rack, quartz ore, nether wart block, uh, red concrete, a little bit of nether brick, some soul sand, and some path blocks. Very, very simple, very effective. Next, we have just the, the ground cover that I use in a lot of places because I really think this is um, simple, but uh, gets it gets you. So this is the dead gray purple earth. Um, just, just gross. Uh, two different kinds of dead coral block. Uh, gravel, mycelium, I think this is light gray stained terracotta, and then um, iron ore block. And that's it. It's just kind of randomized and put in there, and I think it looks really, really effective. Um, and then, last but not least, is the ground cover that I used for our pumpkin patch. So this is just um, brown and earthy and harvesty. So, um, coarse dirt, pod soul, soul sand, brown concrete powder, and path blocks. Very, very simple. That's it. Um, you could also use, um, like, tilled earth. Want to put uh, water blocks every now and then. Give it a nice, uh, luscious brown color as well. Um, but yeah, those are the build palettes. Now, let's go play around and look at some pixel art. Alright, so we are atop my uh, Frenderman here. Um, and I will change the time here in a minute to daytime so you guys can really see. Um, but I did want to show this stuff off at night, uh, partially because I made uh, the moon glow behind our silhouetted witch. Um, white concrete of our dancing skeleton is uh, really striking against the night sky. I also made our uh, our ghost friend glow just a little bit, so I wanted to kind of show it off at night. But, real quick. There we go. Um, so, I really enjoy doing pixel art, like I said. It's kind of uh, an excuse to draw and come up with um, some really organic shapes. Um, and I understand that people aren't going to necessarily want to make these giant pixel arts because they are giant. Um, so some of these also have uh, little tiny smaller companions to kind of show how you can take a, a design or concept and you can shrink it down and simplify it. Um, but yeah, I love doing uh, very organic shapes. You can see um, the curvature that I've given these pumpkins. Um, kind of to give uh, give this one a tall um, tall shape. This one's a little bit more ovular, and then this guy's kind of squashed down and has sunken into the earth a little bit. Um, and I love doing that. I think that's a, a really fun thing to do, especially in a game that's so blocky, is to give some things a little bit of subtle curve. It's nice. Um, this guy, I spent a good bit of time on. He's also got that nice... Um, curved pumpkin head with a, a nice lovely toothy smile um but guys i made plaid in minecraft i just i just want to stop for a second and and i made plaid guys oh this was that was something um <laughs> And I think it's, uh, I used three different colors of green and three different colors, or two different colors of orange and a yellow, um, to make that. I'm really quite proud of him. Um, and his, uh, sticks are at an angle, and he's very dynamic. And then I made this guy, and you don't, no, there's an in-between here. Uh, you don't have to do massive, and you don't have to do so small that it turns into a real derp. Um... But, I wanted to make a real derpy guy, so, uh, here he is. He's much smaller, um, much more manageable if you're in survival, but he's still, you know, a pumpkin-headed scarecrow. Like, you can still tell what he is. And, 
minimized version of plaid. Yeah, pretty proud of that too. Also, he's so cute. Um, this over here is a design um, that I use pretty much every Halloween. I draw this on something. Um, I've I've had this witch in my brain for many years, um, and I was very excited to put her in Minecraft. Um, but she's just a lovely witch silhouetted by the moon. Um, this is a very large pixel art. Let me start off by saying this is, she is almost a hundred blocks tall by a hundred blocks wide. Um, so, you know, if you want to make a really cool silhouetted witch with detail like that, you kind of have to go big. So, um, but I think she's really striking. I think if you were to put her in a town where you could see her from just about anywhere, um, she would be a really cool design element. Uh, and then if we go over this way, uh, we have one of the worst decisions I've ever made. <laughs> Which is to make pixel art on a diagonal. Um, and it's just time consuming, really, is, is the main issue. So when I built this, I actually built a wall first. A diagonal wall, massive diagonal wall. Um, so I had a surface to place blocks on when I was actually uh, transferring pixels in block form. Um, and something to consider when you do diagonal pixel art, yes, it's very dynamic, it looks really cool, especially from far away. It's not as flat looking, um, it's a really cool way of, of giving some extra dimension to your area. but. If you design a pixel art specifically to put it on a diagonal, keep in mind that in Minecraft you now see two sides of a uh, block, so your pixels become elongated considerably. So in my initial pixel art, this skull here was far more rounded uh, and not nearly as wide. Um, so something to keep in mind. I didn't necessarily think it was too big a deal. Um, I don't mind my skeleton boy being a bit thick. -ick -ick -ick. Um, but yeah, it, it's something to consider. And then I made just this real derpy companion piece. Um, he's very, very simplified. Um, but he's still a dancing skeleton that's holding his own skull. You can still tell what he is. Um, so I think, I think you can simplify these a lot if you want to, or you can do somewhere in between and have, um, you can mess with it and get the amount of detail that you want with the amount of work you want to put in. So this guy was the first one that I did for this, and I'm really proud of him. He is such a melty ghost boy, and he's so sad. Um... And I, I love the, the character he has. I made him out of glass so you can see through him, um, which I think is a really fun effect. Um, and then I made him... Oh, hi, Slenderman. Um, I made him smaller. And somehow, in the smaller version, he's even more sad. And I don't... He's so sad. Um, I don't really know how that works. But, uh, like I said, you can... Mess with the size and scale and make it the size that you um, But, I realize that a lot of people have a hard time with pixel art. They either copy something online, which is fine, or uh, they just don't really know where to start. So, I decided to kind of show you how I go about making pixel art. So, um, I'm going to hop over to a tiny little time lapse of me drawing out some pixel art and then show you how you can transfer it. So yeah. So this is pixelart.com slash draw. Um, there's multiple pixel art programs that you can use. Um, I just so happen to be using this one. So let's uh, let's draw a little pixel art friend. I'm just using my mouse. Um, I don't have a tablet or anything. This night, you gotta find
So there we go. I have a couple of adorable candy corn friends for uh, the Halloween season. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna save this file. I'm not gonna add a background to it because the transparent um, background actually makes it easier to count pixels. And then I'm gonna have uh, this up right next to my Minecraft window and we're gonna build it in our little Halloween town. that is going to do it i hope you enjoyed uh the little time lapse of our new candy corn friends um i want to wish you guys all a very very happy halloween um if you are going out and about tonight um please be safe if you're wandering around neighborhoods with kiddos you know people aren't always going to be as careful as you are or as smart as you are so um keep that in mind uh, watch others, you know, be safe. Um, also, if you are uh, an adult person that's going to go partying, uh, please be responsible. All that jazz. Um, so this has been the Halloween series. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. There is going to be a link to a world download down below in case you want to get in here and get a closer look at things, uh, copy some of the pixel art, or just fly around you know, whatever. It will be down below. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I will probably be taking it easy for the first week or two of November, um, as far as posting videos goes. Um, I'm still doing stuff. I'm doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. There's some crazy cool stuff coming up for my channel, and I can't wait for you guys to see it. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a happy and safe Halloween. Uh, click the like button for me. It helps me out a lot. And subscribe if you want to see more goofy, fun, crazy stuff like this.